Negus focuses on three performers, two dancers and one actor who I refer to in the description as the speaker. The dancers wear loose-fitting cropped trousers with another piece of fabric tied around their hips and hanging down over the trousers like a skirt. The trousers are made with a white material with black edging in an African print. Both dancers are bare-chested with their chests, arms and faces painted with an intricate series of white and black markings consisting of swirls, lines, dots and symbols. The speaker wears black top and trousers under an ankle-length black leather coat. Their long, twisted black dreadlocks hang loosely down their back. The speaker also has intricate markings on their face, painted in white and black. They hold a carved wooden cane that they sometimes bang on the ground for emphasis. Most of the action takes place in verdant rural settings with leafy green trees, long grasses, flowing streams and still lakes providing a scenic backdrop for the piece. Towards the end of the film, a black box studio location is included. In this location, the two dancers wear shiny purple and gold suits as they dance in a dim spotlight surrounded by darkness. The dancers use a plethora of dance styles and switch deftly between movements that are lyrical, flowing, viscerally dynamic, tense and sustained. The entire piece is underscored by the poem spoken by the speaker. We cut between shots of the speaker addressing us directly as they deliver the poem and footage of the dancers moving to the words, their movements informed by the speaker's words. A stone bridge over a stream surrounded by lush green trees and foliage. Negus. The green of the trees is reflected in the rippling water. Dapples of sunlight stream through the leaves of the tall trees as a gentle breeze passes through their branches. In the middle of a clearing, three people stand totally still as they stare out at us. Standing centre, the speaker wears a long black coat. The two dancers are bare-chested with intricate white markings on their chests. The speaker is now alone. They turn and speak directly to us. Rise, sun. The eclipse is passing. No longer casting laughing shade. Our golden age is starting once more. So I implore you pour raw energy into your resurgence. The convergence is nigh. The speaker flips back the tail of their coat. The two bare-chested dancers stand facing each other, holding two fingers out to the side. They slowly move their fingers in front of their face. A throne thrown through middle passages damages not the king destined to walk the path to his seat. Intricate arm movements. Concrete speaks not in the tongue of his motherland, but he will not be damned to speak in death. The dead knows no borders, and the ancestors ascended in order for him to receive his crown. Royalty exists in blood so he would not be bound to the ground he wore. They kneel. The wind talks no matter where you reside. The trees and skies hide no secret from a Negus. The dancers leap up, spiral in the air with bent knees and then land softly on the grass. Seek us, they say. In us you'll find light, so no chemtrail will ever darken your day. I and I will always reign. Weaving around each other, spinning under their partner's arms. He was birthed a prince where the dirt is skin. He heard the wind sing siren songs. Along the bond with the pirates of this tarmac sea. The dancers run towards each other and leap forwards. Around here, they rebelled against the tyrant queen. Who captured four bears with piracy. So violent scenes seemed normalized and friendships pitched with blood were fortified. So he thought it right to live this way. He heard his mother say, crime doesn't pay. But his mate's chains told a different story. Glory be to the trap. His mate's chains told a different story. Glory be to the trap. Facing each other, the two dancers launch into an intricate series of movements. Their arms, hands and torsos flex, jerk and undulate in quick succession. 
One dancer gestures as though placing a rope around their neck. The other stands behind and watches as their partner drops to their knees. A montage of sequences, the dancers leap into the air. They shudder as they ripple their hands apart. In a black room, hands held together in the shape of a diamond. Kneeling one behind the other, the dancers sway from side to side as the speaker stands behind them. Clutching their partner by the arm, a dancer throws their partner into the air. In a grassy clearing, one dancer jumps repeatedly. A rage-fueled scream, arms thrashing the air with hands clenched in tight fists. Standing with back rigid, the speaker laughs at us. One of the dancers flays about frenetically, their loose dreadlocks swishing around their face as they convulse and twist their body. Stillness. Bathed in purple light, the speaker stands with eyes closed and arms stretched out to the side. The three performers are placed one behind the other. A dancer sits on the floor, another dancer behind them kneels, and the speaker stands directly behind. The dancers raise their arms above their heads, with their wrists crossed and their hands in fists. As the speaker resumes, the dancers jerk, undulate and twist in a staccato rhythm. All calls to invoke the ancient seem vacant when blatantly devoid of all belief. Beneath the surface, the vessel searches for a way for blood to serve its purpose. Perplexed at how the next in line could find its throne, for he was never shown the way. No coming of age ritual was chained to the memories of those displaced in the physical and spiritual plane. He would not face his journey unscathed, but perhaps his ancestors could reduce the pain. They came to his mother in dreams, trip feeding wisdom that once seemed seized by the seas. The waters of sleep our daughters can traverse with more ease, so hair, they seek visions and wisdom. Knowing she'd listen, learn, discern, pass them on in turn. Wise words are more easily heard from the mother. She would not smother, placing a single gem in his path until he was ready to pick up another. And with each, he'd uncover more of what once lay dormant, recalling majesty and travesty alike, acknowledging the equilibrium of his plight. Finding freedom in knowing shadows but choosing to walk in light in spite of how this jungle was designed to create the illusion of a perpetual night. The dancers spin towards us. The vinyl himself be true. His father too knew the gifts to deliver. Teaching his son to be a giver. Sharing a light so those around can grow in vigour. A king grows richer in service as the service a king's true role anyway. Many stray from the righteousness of this duty, unduly seeking praise and worship, but an eager search is for the elevation of his kin, never placing a king above the people. All souls are created equal, so we beseech all to create no pedestal they themselves cannot reach for. The speaker slowly lowers their fist. One dancer spins into the arms of the other. They hug tightly. In a clearing, the speaker stares at us as the dancers freeze with knees bent and arms raised towards the speaker. A gold crown lying in the hollow of a tree. A prince who imprints legacy unsteadily does not live long in the memory of his ascendants. A remembrance of past kings' triumphs and failings will prevail in providing and sustaining a solid cornerstone. Before the throne were vacated, it was stated that only one who was awakened to his placement as the agnate to the ancients can decode the celestial arrangements and reveal the latent messages waiting within. Patience is king. Our prince was fated to bring ancestral wisdom to the collective, irrespective of whether his status was accepted. This is by no means an easy feat. So he chose to seek the perspective of his wise forefather. He said, The dancers hold each other in a tight embrace. Wise king, you have walked farther than I can possibly fathom. Our people have been damaged beyond compare in no the years. You can hear the wind sing and begin the healing of maladies. Now our people are no longer receptive to his majesty. A manicles if through poison in search of sanctity and remedy. How do I restore access to its melody? 
A boy places the crown on his head. Rise, sun. The eclipse is passing. No longer casting laughing shades. Our golden age is starting once more. So I implore you pour raw energy into your resurgence. The convergence is nigh. Your emergence binds the lines of kings from a multitude of times. Rise, sun. A new day is dawning, spawning more kin emboldened by your rays. A wayfarer paving way for slumbering seeds to wake anew. A rising sun. Rise, my son. Rise. The speaker turns away from us and looks out onto a lake. Now wearing black tunics with gold detailing, the dancers pulse and jerk their torsos in a glitching movement as they jab and thrust their hands forwards. The dancers now stand facing each other with arms raised and their palms touching. Slowly, they entwine their fingers. The speaker stands behind the crowned boy. They both stare at us as he places a hand on the boy's shoulder. Negus. Creative vision and direction by Akeem Toussaint Buck. Film direction and cinematography by Ashley Carroll. Co-directed by Muti Masafiri. Choreographed and performed by Akeem Toussaint Buck and Muti Masafiri. Story written and performed by Solomon the Wizard. The Sun by Kiago Musafiri. Special guest appearance by Azizi Cole. Executive produced by Akeem Toussaint Buck at Toussaint to Move. Commissioned by Sadler's Wells. We are grateful to have been supported by the staff of Sadler's Wells and Streatham Space Project. To the many who have come before us and for the many to come after. Thank you. Sadler's Wells, Toussaint to Move, Panoptical.